Now the word statistical is new in the context of music, naturally. It's borrowed from other fields. Uh, one example, we were asked to make statistical texts in the seminars of Professor Mayabler, uh, random texts. Let's say he would give us, according to the principles of Mark, what he calls Markov series, just uh, individual letters and say, make any text with chance operations. And then he would give us individual syllables, and then individual uh, two-syllable unities, units, etc. And we, we had to, to try to find out what, the, what we call the de degree of redundance is of the resulting texts. And he is a, he was a, a teacher who came from phonetics, from the field of phonetics. Which means the simple analysis of the different sounds of the language led him to the studies of statistics because he wanted to know more precisely what all the different noises are. Analyzing the wave structure of the noises led him to the, the, me the methods of statistics, to describe them and to analyze the consonants in language. Uh, I give you now an example of a composition which is worked out with um, degrees of different um, indeterminacy, with uh, degrees of statistical uh, behavior of certain groups of elements, groups or masses of elements, points of elements. That means that the variability, which was here the result, as an intermediary uh, state between determination and statistical behavior of sounds, groups, and masses, it, that the field, the variability, was based on lines. I gave the example where you could find, follow the lines very well because one instrument was playing a whole sequence of notes. And just following the, the color of the instrument, you were able to follow the different speeds. Whereas in a statistical composition, the field becomes fairly wide and one cannot follow precisely lines. So I give an example from um, cycle for a percussionist, for one percussionist. And then this cycle for one percussionist, there are certain <coughs> events which are clearly periodic. And they show by that being periodic. For example, in accelerando, that they are not statistical, that they are determined. When I do dang, ping, dang, 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 that is certainly not statistical. Because statistical means that you can uh, permutate, change the order without that it really matters. Whereas when I change the order of the, of the attacks that I have just uh, produced with my mouth, then there is no longer direction, no longer determination. When it makes, for example, and then afterwards I make it doesn't really matter because there is no direction. It's just an irregularity of distribution of small groups. So please listen now to the following composition. In these terms, whenever you hear something that has a direction, for example, you hear a cowbell drum symbol, cowbell drum symbol, cowbell drum symbol, triangle. Through that repetition, there is clear direction given. Whereas in, in others, you hear cowbell symbol, triangle, guero, guero, triangle, guero, cowbell symbol, etc. No direction. And that is, is and it is clearly composed in that way. Then, for example, there is a, a system where you have these notes which are in an actual rondo until there is a change of direction. That is clear direction, like an arrow. Determination. And on top you have, let's say, over that time field, you have a box which is like this. 
And in, in this box, you have different elements, and it says distribute these elements in any order. This would be with a tam tam, and this would be with a cowbell, and that there would be another element of that length, which would be, let's say, with a triangle. That's it. And then it says distribute them in any order, and repeat them, let's say, five times. Uh, I mean, not 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 repeat them. Uh, use them all five times in any order. So the degree of statistical composition changes in such a composition between very small time uh, time field and very few elements that can be distributed up to a very large number and a long time field there are many different degrees and I have worked with a series of nine degrees of statistical <coughs> distribution I'm not saying that you're supposed to find these nine degrees up but uh, the music that is the result of such a method has very particular characteristics compared to another music, and that is what, what is important in the context of this uh, talk. very determined. used since the introduction of statistical methods into musical composition the term of of the band and of the width of the band that means whatever the de determination is let's say in a in pitch highest pitch lowest pitch or in rhythm smallest shortest duration longest duration or in timbre the brightest used timbre in a certain texture and the and the darkest what is in between such limits is called a band. And the band has a certain width. When the width of the band is zero, then we have 
a highly determinate situation, then there is no choice. And when the band is widening and finally uh, going over the whole range of possibilities, in pitch lines, when I can say, for example, any pitch, then it's the band width is maximum, maximum. So between extreme determinism, determinism and the extreme relative indeterminism in a given composition, there are all the degrees composed uh, in terms of the different widths of bands. And some composers have, since the statistical methods were introduced, completely specialized in statistical composition. For example, a man like Xenakis, or to a great extent, a composer like uh, Ligeti, or also a composer like Penderecki. They became famous because they just specialized on one aspect. And this happens every once in a while in music, as well as in all the other fields, that someone specializes on, on, on one new uh, aspect of the field of forming. Let's say like Mark Toby uh, would uh, specialize for years and years and years on certain microstructures, or textures, let's say. Or like Ligeti on band composition, or Penderecki on clusters. <coughs> they become cluster speciali specialists. Like uh, in other contexts, uh, let's say the American Feldman becomes a specialist in, as, in music that is as slow as possible and as soft as possible. We have these uh, specialists every once in a while who specialize in one very narrow field, then go very deep. But they vary it all the time. You know this in painting even more than in music, that someone has so-called uh, uh, style, uh, personal style. What, what we mean by that is that someone narrows himself completely so that he can be identified when you even see a little bit of him, of his work. Then you can say, aha, that's Eve Klein, it's blue. And uh, we can really say that universalists are becoming very rare in, in all fields. Very, very rare. We have mainly, like in all the fields of sciences, or like, let's say, medicine or so, we have people who spe specialize on part of a limb. And then <coughs> do nothing but that. I always say to students who are studying with me, if you want to become famous, then just take a, a lens, an optical lens, and put it on one of my scores, and what you see through it, you just multiply it for five years. <laughs> for example, if you, see, if you see snare drum, then you start composing about 20 pieces only with snare drums <laughs> of all different sizes, for 50 snare drums, for 20 snare drums, for 30 <laughs> snare drums, snare drums on a roof, snare drum in the basement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the snare drums, really, and very tiny snare drums. <laughs> And then snare drums amplified, ring modulated, snare drums. I mean, snare drums. Then he will be the snare drum composer. <laughs> and he will be known in Japan, he will be known everywhere. You can specialize on anything, or let's say trill. Just become a trill composer. It's very easy. Or the crescendo composer, or like I say, the pianissimo composer, or the as soft as possible composer. <laughs> The, the cluster composer, what, what, what have you. <coughs> so, I came to the last, last set of terms. We have traditional terms like development, of sequence and moment. Just a few musical terms, development, more and more in the first movement of the uh, sonata forms, the thematical development, a theme, and increasingly reduction of the number of themes. There were compositions with three themes, two themes, finally even sometimes one single theme. Leading to the extreme historically that Schoenberg said as the ultimate statement of what he wanted to do, as he said everything is developed. 
And he had that idea, as well as Matthias Hauer, another obsessed uh, Austrian, uh, <laughs> uh, saying that he just wanted to work uh, a whole universe just with one formula. And then it, it was not in vain, all very close together historically, when scientists announced the Einheitsformel, the, the formula that would be at the basis of the whole universe. You know that this word has been in the air. Heisenberg has been related several times to the Einheitsformel, to the unifying formula, etc. It's in the air. Everything is development of one thing. That's what Schoenberg said in one composition. The series, for example. Or a series of proportions. I, I said during the first works that I composed. I have uh, written the word dramatic underneath. And when we, feel, when we hear the word dramatic, we always think <clears throat> something emotionally loaded. That's not necessarily true at all. Dramatic means you present figures, people, like the Greek drama, develop, and then develop. Lead these figures through all different, through, through different kinds of experiences. One gets killed, another one gets married, and the third one gets sick, uh, another one uh, goes to America, etc. Not, not in, a, in a Greek drama. <laughs> it's a little early. But uh, it, yeah, I mean, things go, happen that way. So and then he reoccurs, he comes home, uh, a lot of things happen uh, during the course of the journey, etc. Dramatic means that you are, can always follow the red thread. Even if you lose it sometimes, that even increases the dramatic uh, uh, force, you know, the tension. But then, uh, in music in particular, in Europe, in the classical time, the music had to represent the general interpretation of the universe. If the end is good, everything is good. So there had to be the re, uh, recapitulation at the end. And then, uh, well, everything, everybody was pleased, no matter what had happened in the meantime. There was, had to be an optimistic end. That was in music the case, not so much in the drama. Whereas it has something to do with the classical time, naturally. In, in Goethe dramas, we find that too. That Ultimately, the good force, etc., was coming through. But there are a lot, and in particular in England, you know that, from Shakespeare, uh, and where the dramatic composition was made in a way that the figures, I mean, the drama was naturally finished when everybody was killed. And then it, there was a natural end. The conclusion uh, was determined by the, the fact that they could not get out of the tomb and start all over again. At that time. <laughs> so we have quite a lot of musical compositions which reflect this concept of how to interpret the evolution of the universe. And this comes certainly from the Jewish Christian tradition in our work. Because there is that beginning and that end. It has very much to do with the interpretation of the arc of development. A very particular initial moment and a very particular final moment. And then the drama, so to speak, is in between these points. In a completely different way, I could play you a dramatic form, forming, as a development, but without that uh, traditional load of emotional uh, expressions. And I play you the first, no, I may even play two movements, of a composition which is called Kreuzspiel, my very first work. There were still these ideas inside, and they are recurring nowadays in my work again. Because I think never anything is lost, it's just transformed and expanded, enlarged. So the, the development as uh, as a method of composing will always be found. It is direction, arrow, in time. And you hear now the first movement of Kreuzspiel, crossing game, and what actually happens if you hear a bit more carefully rather than 
listening to it as being a, a decorative piece, you will hear in the field of the pitches in the beginning six notes in the highest octave and six notes in the lowest octave. And they are all played by the piano. By the, by the piano. And then one by one, each note crosses through the octaves. Etc. <coughs> Finish. At, at the end of the first movement, the six notes which were in the highest octave are in the lowest and vice versa. And the process, the development is clearly, can be clearly perceived because when they reach now into the two middle octaves, the three middle octaves, then these notes are played by two other instruments, by bass clarinet and oboe. So they go through that region and as each note is leaving the extreme position one after another, one by one all the octaves, all the space will be filled until there is a middle section where all the octaves are filled equally and then towards the end of the first movement the, the middle region is again emptied and the notes are at the edges. So that is a clear development. And it, it all lasts uh, two minutes, not longer. the beginning of the second movement, I still thought in terms of movements, it was the first composition that I consider being my, my music, so to speak, music that I have 
composed, whereas all the works that I composed before were student works, uh, exercises. And that was music which was very much influenced by music like Schoenberg, Beethoven, etc., very uh, dramatic in, in that other sense. So the second movement of that work then begins in the middle region and spreads out until it fills all the octaves and with the same crossing of the registers, of the octaves. And then uh, the third movement combines both at the same time, so simultaneously. In most of the music that has been composed since 1951, the development has been given up. And it is a shame, I would say. I think in the, in the future, we, we need, again, more uh, layers within compositions in which there is a strong directionality composed, clear developments. Uh, you know that it is a general tendency in literature as well to think that the red thread is something very old-fashioned. The fact that you can follow people uh, within a drama or in a, in a novel and that uh, the characters have to change to such an extent that you don't recognize the individuals anymore or people in, are introduced in, in, a, in a novel and then never reoccur again. Or in, in dramas, uh, uh, well, I haven't seen too many, but I, I, I see them in my mind all the time where someone is, is, is uh, playing a certain role and then five minutes later he comes in in a completely different role and then again in another role and then another role, the same person. And the recurrence of the, of the same person is not needed at all. But what is needed is the way he occurs, the way he plays it, or the way he, he appears, that's what I mean. Uh, so development must be uh, reintroduced into musical composition. Otherwise it becomes too weak. It becomes uh, too, um, it gives too much importance to the individual event. Then the other uh, way of forming is to work with sequences. We know this in music <coughs> under the terms of variation forms. You have a theme and not necessarily the theme needs to be your own theme. The greatest composers have composed large variation compositions on the theme of other composers or on folk tunes. So you just add a series of sequence, so you add uh, sequences of variations to each other. Another uh, term is the suite. We have the French suite, you have the English suites. And uh, it is nothing but a, a series of different, different uh, character pieces, like you find it in pop music, still nowadays. The, the more primitive or the more simple the music, the more you find sequences variation forms and just a change. Let's have a change. From slow movement to fast movement to medium movement, uh, a little uh, sad, a little happy, a little aggressive, a little moody, etc. A, a suite. Like the dance suites that of the Baroque time. That's where it all uh, began. And then still in the classical symphony, we have that concept of the suite of four movements. The more dramatic one, the more gay one, the more dance one, the minuet, third, and then the rondo, which is another kind of a dance form, with a recurring uh, refrain. Always the refrain is played together, and then you have some derivations, and then you come always back to the same um, formula, sequential forms. I have called it the epic form, because you can add and you can play uh, less. I mean, you can subtract. It doesn't change, really. Uh, an, an, epic, uh, an epic forming. Nevertheless, there have been already uh, attempts, as early as in Beethoven's Diabelli variations, to compose a synthesis of sequential forms, of epic forms and dramatic forms development. For example, the Diabelli variations are a variation form, a sequence of variations, but at the same time he tries to build like an enormous bridge, a unified development within these, this series of variations. And um, Webern 
was always dreaming of the synthesis of the sonata form and the variation form. I give another example of a more recent uh, concept of what a sequential form may sound like. It is my last work, Mantra. I have used a 13-note formula. We played it here in London uh, twice and last year. And I have explained it several times. And there's nothing but this formula used during the whole time of the composition. The formula is, yes, expanded in its interval and compressed, but it's always that same formula. And the individual characteristics of the 13 notes, the first one being, uh, for example, a note which has an attack at its end. Um, no, no, excuse me. The first note has a periodic repetition. Ta -da -da. The second one has an accent at the end. Ta -ta. No, ti -ta. The third note is a normal note. Ta -da. The next one has a little ornament at the beginning. Ya -da 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 -da, which can be expanded in many forms. Ta -ti -ta -ta -ta, etc. And then the, the, the <coughs> next two notes have the following periodicity. Ya -da -de -da -de -pa, which means it is the seed or the the cell of uh, tremoli, that it can, uh, can, can come of tremolo, which means uh, or ta, pa, pi, pa, that can come in all speeds, very fast, very slow, etc. There are 13 characteristics. The, the next one is for you, ta da, an accent at the beginning. These individual characteristics determine then 13 large regions of the whole piece. So in the first region, the, rep the periodic repetition is predominant. And the second one, the accent at the end, etc. It is an expansion of one small formula over 60, more than 60 minutes. And I remember when I first thought of that piece, I thought I make a melody which is stretched of a few notes, let's say, well, 13 notes, which is stretched over one hour. And then I bring always smaller formulas compressions of this melody related to the individual notes of this of, of the melody of the large melody and to each of these notes again the formula in in a smaller compression etc so I have worked from the from the large to the small in always using the same formula uh, what we are hearing is a, a permanent sequence without a directionality without a clear direction where I'm going I'm not going anywhere but more uh, in all directions I have no clear direct no not one direction in that piece and uh, please listen now to uh, the result of a musical forming forming which is uh, absolutely and I mean that absolutely sequential there's nothing but sequential um, composition.
Thank you.